All right, well, I'm just going to get started then. Um, so as you guys know, we manufacture a lot of different weapons at Karate Mart. And uh, one of the things we also do is we have different factories and manufacturers sending us stuff. So we get like new weapons all the time that like, we have to test out because I don't want to sell stuff that's junk. That's like a big goal of mine is to try to only sell stuff that's actually decent. So I just got this shipment yesterday of all of these different knives and I want to open them up with you guys and actually see what is worth selling. I don't know if any of these things are any good, um, but I figured we'd look at them together and just see. So I have a whole stack of things here. Um, let's just start with the first one. So. Okay, this is interesting. This is called the Bone Collector Knife. So let's just look at this. All right, so I like, I first off, I like how it's full tang. I guess that's something that's kind of cool. Uh, but the type of steel, it doesn't even say what type of steel this is. So I'm going to guess that this is a 3CR13 stainless steel would be my guess. Um, Cause it's a fairly inexpensive knife. But this is like a weird design for a knife. Like, I don't know if I'm too into this design, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. So, well, okay. Hanon says it's, it's so beautiful. So yeah, we really? got some okay. compliments for it. Okay, cool. So it does look like it is a bone handle. So I do kind of like that, that's unique. Um, but, okay, so it's got this ring in the pommel, which works this way. Like if I'm gonna hold it this way, that works. Like I get that. But when I see a ring in the pommel, I typically like to hold a knife like a karambit. And that hole is way too small for me. I can't even fit my finger in. So that does no good for me as a karambit. I don't like that at all. That bothers me. And then let's just take a closer look at the design of this. So if I do hold it the correct way, like this, there should be jimping right here. There should be thumb grooves right here for me to actually hold onto this knife properly. But as you can tell, the manufacturer put the jimping right here. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, am I going to hold yeah. the knife White backwards? Well, yeah, well, White Tiger <laughs> agrees with you. He yeah. says, he says I mean, Look at that. I'd have to hold it like this to actually have this be a decent knife. Yeah, yeah White, so, White Tiger is saying it is, it is cool, but it's unorthodox. It's, it's, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, okay, and if the jimping's up here, which you see it is, my finger should at least go through all the way. So unless you have really small hands, this knife is useless. I don't see any point to this. Uh, the blade is kind of sharp, not overly sharp. Um, got that gut hook there, which is decent, but it just doesn't look very good quality. So, um, you know, we have manufacturers sending us stuff all the time that they want us to sell their stuff really bad, but I just tell them I'm not gonna sell stuff that's junk. It doesn't make any sense to me. So um, let's, let's test this out a little bit. I mean, I, first off, I don't like how my fingers in here because it feels like it's gonna be painful if I hit it wrong, and then my thumb is up here. I mean, that, that makes no sense. So, I mean, it is, it is slicing that pretty nicely. That's pretty decent, but I mean, as you guys can tell, this is not gonna be sold on KarateMart.com. I just, <laughs> I don't like it. Um, I guess I like the sheath of it. I like the leather sheath. I think that's kind of cool, um, but uh, that's a no-go. So, <laughs> and, and what's so sad is I probably get like, I don't know, 20 products a week that people want me to sell on the site, but after I test them, only one or two of them actually get up on the site. So I just don't want to sell junk. That's that's the key. All right, so we'll put that guy away. Um, and, and is there anything else you guys would like to see me test this out on that would be kind of cool? Like, I'd, I'd rather not just slice up the Wing Chun dummy. What else would we like to... Oh, I got an idea. Here, let's see. <laughs> All right. All right, so I've got this concrete block here. <laughs> I don't know exactly how this is gonna work, but I'm just gonna set it up here. Let's see. See if I can set that up nicely. There we go. All right, so I just wanna see how quickly the blade gets doled up. That's, that's usually kind of an important thing to test is how quickly the blade doles. And blades don't dole very quickly on wood. I mean, you can see a little bit of doling, but it's not a lot. Uh, but honestly, when I just did that just then, it actually really hurt right So you can see on my finger how it actually scraped my finger because this ring in the pommel is just not the right size. 
So it's so important for you to get a knife that actually fits your hand properly. If you watched the video I just released where it was all the knives under $20, that last knife that I showed wasn't my favorite because it was way too small for my hand. So I would never feel like I had good control of that yeah. knife. And White Tiger says that he saw something similar to this on uh, Forge and Fire. Oh, I love so, that show. Yeah, <laughs> that show so. was so cool. That was a good show. All right, so, all right, so that should give us a good idea of how quickly it dulls. And yeah, you can see it, it actually already dulled that blade, and that is one of the biggest problems with stainless steel is that it dulls really quick. Um, I showed off a knife sharpener in the last video that would fix that for you rather quickly, uh, but if you're big into knives, if you actually want to carry a bunch of knives at home, I would definitely suggest getting a belt sander. Belt sanders are just so quick and so simple for sharpening up a blade of a knife. In fact, I might even show that in this video or on another video at some point, but um, and they're cheap too. They're really not that expensive. We've got a good quality, like a really nice one here because we actually manufacture a lot of weapons, but I've seen some belt sanders that are like 50, 60 bucks that you can get online. So it's definitely something to invest in if you're a knife person. And it's so easy to do. You just have to hold the blade at the right angle and just sharpen it. It's so easy, so. Yeah, Flash Force lets us know you need Flash the right Force tool. is in there. Awesome, yeah, he, awesome. He says you need the right tool for the right job. Oh, absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, <laughs> I love getting to know you guys so much in Flash Force. You're, you're one of my favorites. I really appreciate all your support. Uh, but I always want to know what your real name is because I hate saying, hey, Flash Force is on here. Yeah. So Flash Force, if you don't mind, what is your real name so I can call you by your, your actual name? Yeah. If you guys don't know, my name's Kyle. That's what I go by. So I'm Will. <laughs> That's Will. Yeah. If you feel comfortable with that, don't worry if you don't. Yeah, no big deal. yeah. Alex Sanders reminds us also that only use really a belt sander if you know what you're doing because you can kind of mess things up that way. True, <laughs> true. But that also depends on the type of belt you're using. Uh, if you're using a, a leather strap belt, it's going to be a long time before you mess up a blade on a knife. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. If you're using uh, something with a, the wrong grit, it can definitely mess up your blade. And I remember as a kid, so I made weapons when I, I started making weapons when I was really young, and it's a funny story because um, my parents did not like having me having weapons. They did not, um, and I was in martial arts and stuff, and my my dad just did not like the idea of me carrying weapons. I get that, um, but I grew up like I spent a lot of time on a farm, and um, so what I would do is I would make my own weapons, and I had a great time with it. And it's funny how you know that's kind of converted into this business at this point. Uh, but I did a lot of things wrong when I was learning how to make weapons. I remember I, ha I tried using a grinder, like a standard steel grinder on a blade when I was really young and it just burnt right through the blade. So yeah, you're absolutely right. If you don't know what you're doing, you can definitely mess up a blade really easily. Um, nowadays, if I want to fix a knife, if it's got like a bad point or something, I'll often use a soft wheel on a grinder and that'll just kind of fix up the tip of the knife really well and then I'll use a belt sander on the blade itself. And then I'll start with, um, you know, certain grit, and then I'll kind of get to the point where it's like a really high grit, like a leather or something like that, and, and then that uh, works pretty nicely. And, uh, uh, Flash Force also let us know. Flash Force's name is Troy. Troy. Oh, yeah. I, I love that name. It's a great name. Yeah, I, one of my favorite football players as well. So, all right, cool. Well, let's go on to the next one. Um, let's see. I've got so many knives here I want to check out. Um, okay, so this company sent me a bunch of throwing knives which I love throwing knives, but the thing is, if you've seen my videos, you know that there's only certain throwing knives I actually like because they have to be a certain weight. Um, little tiny throwing knives are great. They look cool, they, they're fun to conceal, like they're really concealable, but the little ones just don't throw very well. You see them bounce really quickly, or they just don't stick very nicely. They just bounce and end up on the floor. Um, so I do like seeing new throwing knives, but I don't like garbage throwing knives. So these guys, are interesting. I mean, this company, so they, they use this kind of paint on there that's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess when I was ordering the samples of these, the picture looked like they were metallic, but now when I look at them up close, they just look like it's kind of cheaply painted, which you see that a lot. Like, there's a lot of small manufacturers out there that don't really know what they're doing yet. So they, they don't anodize things correctly. They'll, they'll use like spray paint instead or something like that. And um, I don't want to sell that stuff. That's, that's, to me, that's kind of garbage because that's just going to chip off really quickly. And I don't know, it doesn't look very good. Uh, but as far as the weight goes, these things are actually balanced pretty nicely. Um, they're a little bit lighter than I'd prefer. 
but they're nice and sharp on the tip and uh, throwing knives are a really good example of why you might want to invest in a sharpener of some sort because if you are using throwing knives they get they get dinged up so quickly I mean because most likely they're gonna hit the ground at some point um, these aren't bad these really aren't bad I actually <laughs> if I had a watermelon here, I'd stick it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't want to do that in here because it might bounce against me or something. Uh, but the reason why I wouldn't sell these is just the paint looks cheap. I don't want to sell stuff where the paint looks cheap and it's just going to chip off. Um, but they're not bad. They're not bad. Oh, this is kind of cool though. They, they, they came with a leather case. You don't see that very often with uh, throwing knives. So actually kind of like that but uh, I'm gonna put that away and let's look at something else okay so I've got this kukri here which is pretty cool um, I like the idea of getting a kukri knife that was like a little bit more um, kind of old looking so let's look at this first off I like the sheath I like how it's a leather sheath that's kind of cool um, and the blade the blade looks like they James, I don't remember if it was James or if it was Flashpoint that was telling me about this process on here, what they did to make this process. It was on, um, uh, which weapon? It was on one of the weapons we showed off recently. Um, Flashpoint, do you remember, Troy, was that you that told me about the stuff that they put this on that blade? Like, makes the blade look old? I thought it was you. Maybe it was somebody else. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm seeing this more and more on weapons lately where they're just, it, it's like a, uh, a spray that they're spraying onto the blade to give it that kind of old school styling. And if it's done right, it looks really, really awesome. But this one, it almost looks like they put it on wrong because it looks like it's actually corroding the blade. Like you can see that it's actually like there's some rust on the blade, which, yeah. And if you look at my finger, it's actually getting kind of brown and rusty which I don't like that. I mean, I like, I like the idea of making a blade look old or, you know, like that, but uh, I don't like the idea of making it look rusty. That's not a good idea. Um, the handle's unique. The handle is unique because this is actually like a decent wood that looks like a walnut or something. But I mean, look at this, look at that junk. I mean, if a company's going to send me a sample of something, at least send me one where it looks good. This thing's obviously got a chip right out of the handle, and that tells me right there that the wood's not going to be good enough quality to sell. So, um, sadly, this is a pretty... Oh, 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 look at this. Okay, look, look at the tang on this blade, too. Okay, you can see that it's just got a rat tail in there. That's not going to hold on there very well. I, in fact, I bet this blade will probably break off if we, if we hit something with it. Um, all right, let's try the wing shot. I'm just gonna do it lightly. I don't have a lot of space in here, so. Okay, it didn't do anything yet. So, I mean, it's in there pretty decent. I'm just, okay, and, and then also. Yeah, Alex Seekins weighs in the rat tails are a no-go. Yeah, absolutely, I completely agree, Alex. Um, and then look, you can just, you can tell that the tang's not gonna be very good in there because the pins are just too high. You usually see them at least halfway if we're if we're gonna have a full tang blade. So my guess is, in fact, we should probably break this apart. That'd be kind of cool. Do you guys want to break it apart and see what's actually inside? I think that'd be awesome. I need to see at least three people say yes if we're gonna do that. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on. Good morning. Morning. Okay. So nobody nobody cares to see. Yeah, we got two yes. Yes, we got three now. Okay, yes. three. Okay, yeah. so let's actually take this camera in back and um, go break this apart. I think that'd be kind of fun to do. Okay, I don't know who's back here yet. We're uh, we're just opening up. It's still too early in the morning. Yes, the people want us to wreck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I'm going to turn on uh, the lights real quick back here. All right, let's see. Let me grab the camera. Let's see what we have. Okay, we got a mallet. Are you sure where's that? Here we go. Okay, got a hammer. 
I'm going to throw on some safety glasses too, real quick. Yeah, if I don't throw on safety glasses, you guys will get mad at me, so. <laughs> Let's, uh, I'm just going to get on the ground here, and I want to see what's inside this thing. So. Okay, yeah, see, that's exactly what I thought it was gonna look like. So we got that little tiny sliver in there, which, I mean, it's a little bit longer than I thought, but you could tell that the pins were just holding in that one little spot, which um, that wood held on pretty nicely, actually. I honestly think that would have held up for you for a while, but I'd prefer, I would have definitely preferred to see this blade go through the handle completely, full tang. Um, and I don't even know what kind of steel this is. I'm going to guess that this is a stainless steel. Do you have a magnet back here, Cheryl? Actually, I know where one is. Here we go. Okay, so this actually looks like it's probably a carbon steel. Uh, the magnet sticks to it nicely. Magnets don't usually stick to stainless steel as nice. Um, so I'm gonna guess that this is a carbon steel, but uh, yeah, this is not, this did not pass the test as far as like a, a weapon we would want here. We always like to break things up, actually test them really nicely. The blade looks pretty nice here. I'm actually gonna show you, so the belt sander, just to show you how easy this is. All right, so I usually like to set the angle differently depending on what I'm doing, but because we're gonna do this quick, I'm just gonna show you. So what I like to do, there's, there's this spot up here that just doesn't have that. So I like to kind of push that in. Okay, so see how it just perfectly made that blade? Oh yeah, super sharp. So I just, I just took off any dullness off that blade. And then the tip up there, I'm gonna use a soft wheel on that. So let's, let's ding up that tip really quick. Okay, so see how I dinged up that tip? So I'm just gonna use a soft wheel on that. Good, okay, so now the ship is, the point is nice and sharp. Then we're gonna use the belt sander. We keep a nice angle. Look at that. Look how perfect that is now. Like it's, it looks great. That's definitely, oh, super sharp. That would actually cut my finger in like a second. So it's really just that easy. And then we have all different types of belts depending on different grits. So we can, you know, make it sharper. We can make it finer, polish it up, you know, whatever we want to do. But uh, let's go back into the other room and uh, look at some other knives. So. <laughs> on there right now we have 32 people right now okay in there. We got a couple people weighing in a lot of people like to show in the uh using the sander there so oh, cool very cool gotcha gotcha is there anyone new on there that i haven't spoken to before i'd say so far i'm uh, most excited that i get to to learn troy's real name this morning that's nice <laughs> All right, let's put that piece of garbage away. Kevin Wilt is in here. Kevin, Kevin Wilt is new. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I haven't heard your name before. Does he go by screen name, Kevin? Kevin Wilt's the screen name. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Very nice to meet you, Kevin. Yeah. Appreciate you watching. All right, is Lu there... Louis Reeves is in here, too. Louis Reeves says what's up. Louis Reeves. I have I have seen Louis Eli in here before. Elijah Reyna says oh, Elijah, okay. Yeah, nice to meet you, Elijah. Uh, Lewis wants to know if there's going to be any butterfly knives today. Oh, you know what? I I don't believe there's any here, but I can grab one. That's actually a really good idea. Ooh. Yeah, Lawrence Alvel is also here. Lawrence is new, so okay. Him. 
Chris Witt from Riverview, Florida is here. Chris so, Witt, okay. okay. Nice so, to meet you, Chris. Yeah, so we got some people joining us for that. Yeah, I'm trying to think which butterfly knives I'd want to show. I, I love butterfly knives. I absolutely love them. Um, I know we've got a whole bunch of new Jean, ones. Giancarlo Suarez is here. He's new, too. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, nice to meet you. Tyler Herman's not new, but he says what's up to us. Okay, yeah, Tyler. That, that Real Holy Rosario says what's up to us, too. I, all the time. Um, I always call uh, him RHR. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what kind of knife do you guys want to see next? Uh, I've got... Oh, this one's weird. This one's really weird. Okay, so this is called a commando knife, is what they call it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't think I'd call that a commando knife exactly. What would you guys call this? I mean, I like the sheath. I think the sheath is kind of cool. I mean, it looks pretty nice, like a bayonet sheath or something. Um, but look at this blade. Okay, so the blade is, it, it looks like, this is, de this is definitely a stainless steel here. Um, I don't like that hand guard that's actually digging into my hand a little bit. The handle's unique, like I like the wood there, that's kind of cool. Um, and, but again, I can tell that this is another rat tail. This is, this to me is garbage. I don't like this kind of knife that's kind of a rat tail. Um, I bet, I bet we can break this one. I would be willing to bet we can break this one. Um, in fact, I wonder if we can twist it off. That'd be weird. White Tiger says it should be called attention oh, seeker knife. Look, yes, yes, <laughs> that's perfect. Okay, so, so look at this. So I just twisted this, and look how that just bent that there. So if I were to see that, I would say, heck no. I would never buy a knife like this. This is not something we would ever sell. Um, I would be willing to bet that I can break this thing. Let's let's try it on the Wing Chun. I mean, I gotta move this thing just a little bit so I can get yeah. a little bit, a bit of force in there. Mr. Gelman just waited and say hi too. Hey, so. Mr. Gelman. Okay, I felt it wobble when I did that. That's not good. Okay, yeah, you can see. And white, white, <laughs> white, 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 white tiger suggesting we use the bandsaw to break apart the next thing. The bandsaw to break apart? How is that? That's just going to saw right through it. What do, you, what do you mean? Just like put it on there and break through the metal or through the handle? What do you think? That would have actually made that last handle so much easier to get through. That's actually a really good point. I didn't, I wouldn't have had to hammer it. And John Carlo wants us to break this one too. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Well, how do we want to break this one? I mean, I already basically broke it. Look how it, just hitting it against Wing Chun dummy, you can see that it's slightly just curved now. You probably can't see that on camera. Let's, let's make it really curved. Yeah, you can definitely see now. It's t tilting that way. So that's pretty garbage. Do you want to see what's inside this knife? You want to try the bandsaw? Actually, try yeah, the should bandsaw. We, should we bandsaw this one, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could. The only problem with the bandsaw is it's going to cut like that. I mean, I could put it on like that, but that's, that's not really safe. <laughs> we, we could make it safe. I'd definitely have to wear some glasses and Chris, I'd have to go to the Chris side. Chris wants us to put in a vice and bend it. Make sure you wear that's, your glasses. That's a better idea. That's a better <laughs> idea. Okay. And how do you want me to do that, Chris? Do you want me to put the blade in the vice or do you want me to put the handle in the vice and hit it that way? What do you Let's think, see. Chris? White Tiger wants to do it with a parallel blade with some tongs. <laughs> parallel John, blade with some tongs. <laughs> John, Carlo just, John Carlo wants us to do it to break it. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Any other suggestions on how to break it? I, would, I want to see the handle split in half. I wonder, ooh, you know, I wonder if we can break it like this. Yes, yeah, Chris Whip says yes, blade. Blade. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm so, curious if I can break it like this by stabbing, though. I wonder if this is on there tight enough. Curious, but because this thing's just garbage, so it actually <laughs> actually sliced into that concrete, okay. And Chris Chris Witt wants us to try it in the vice. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> it actually, I'm actually impressed by how well that that tip held up. Um, it's honestly not that; it's still pretty sharp. And that went that actually went in, dug into this. So you can see, I mean, that dug in a little ways into that concrete. So the fact that that tip actually held up is not that bad. I mean, this knife is completely garbage. The problem is that um, when I did that, that dug right into my finger there. So that actually 
<laughs> you can see it kind of dug in a little bit there and uh, you know hurt a little bit. But um, okay, so let's break this thing. Um, vice, we're we gonna do the vice. Let's do the vice. All right, let's do the vice. Okay, let's go see what we can do with the vice. I'd like to try something new though. I bet we got some other stuff we can break with. James isn't on there, is he? James Harrington? James, are you in here? No? Okay. <laughs> He's, he was asking for some new bow stabs, and we just got a bunch of new ones in, so. Uh, Chris, sorry. Last name pronounced Witty. Gotcha. Okay, so. Throw down vice. And get some safety glasses. Okay. All right, now, what do you want me to do here? How do you want me to break this thing? Should I bend it? I'm curious, I'm actually curious because this is a stainless steel, it doesn't bend as well, it usually breaks. But I don't know, that's gonna be boring though. Let's just try Flash it. Force wants us to slam it blade to blade with a good knife. Slam it blade to blade. <laughs> Good knife. I'm trying to think which knife I would want to use against it. Um, dang. Yeah, I mean, we have some really good ones. Chris Whitty wants you to pull it back. <laughs> pull it back and yeah. see how... <laughs> go out of the way. <laughs> okay, so we got to bend. I'm curious how long it's going to take before it breaks. I like Flashpoint's idea, too. I just don't know which blade I'd use. I've got some really good ones in my head that would be good to use against it. Okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> okay, just bent all the way through. There Whoa, we go. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Should I try to sharpen that? <laughs> Let's try to sharpen it, see if I can fix it. Flash Force says 1060 Tonto. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I was actually I was actually thinking a 1060. Um, there's also some tool steel ones that I was thinking might be kind of cool against it. Uh, all right, I'm actually curious if I can fix this thing, make it actually sharp again and stuff. Let's try that. Let's just see. Okay, so because because we've got such a huge tip we've got to make out of this, we definitely have to use the grinder first. So I'm actually going to use a really coarse steel grinder first just to get the tip right. So let's try that first. And I know this looks extreme, but it's the only way to get that tip quickly to a point. Yeah, so we're getting the we're getting the basic point now. So when I was a kid, when I first tried this, this is what I did wrong is I used too coarse of a sharpener there or a grinder to actually do it. And what it does is it burns up the steel. So look how that's kind of burnt up there. Now, if I would have had a soft wheel and a belt sander to fix that when I was a kid, it would have worked, but I didn't. I only had access to one grinder. It wasn't, wasn't good enough. So now I'm gonna use a soft wheel to actually clean that up. So do you hear how like, 
how it's not as coarse. It's not really eating away that metal as much. It's actually making it kind of look more sharp. And it's taking away, so that was the first side. So the first side looks pretty good, but you can see the other side's still burnt up. So let's get that burn off of there. Yeah, 1060 uh, manganese is what they make railroad tracks from, so it should be yeah. tough enough, and that's what Flash Force weighed in with right there. Oh, I do like, I do like 1060 manganese. I actually like it a lot. Yeah, I, I wish I had a guy like Troy working closer, living closer to me, because he knows so much about this stuff. I love it. Alex Seekin says, all depends on the heat treat. Yeah, that's absolutely true. White Tiger, yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. So we're getting, the blade actually is starting to look good. Now, if I wanted to actually do this, I would bend the blade back to normal and stuff. But we're on live, so I don't want to do that. Okay. Now we're just going to take the belt sander and clean it up. Fine Ninja. Fine Ninja? Yeah. Is that a Chad Wildclay fan? <laughs> Behind Fine Ninja, are you a Chad Wildclay fan? He's one of my buddies. He's a good guy. Lewis Reed wants to know if you ever made a sword from scratch. Yes, absolutely. White Tiger has a challenge. Okay. We should ruin one of our weapons and repair it and then be able to sell it. Well, that's kind of what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't sell a ruined weapon, though. <laughs> that's terrible. Like, I would never sell this thing. But, uh, I mean, we have the tip sharp enough now. That's hot. But, yeah, you can tell the, chip is, the tip is definitely sharp enough that uh, we could... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And the tip. All right, so let's see. I mean, this is a really tough table. If we had some actual wood I could dig into. Well, this guy. Okay, so. If I spent more time on it, we could definitely get it a lot sharper. But, I mean, really, that's not bad for cleaning up a knife where the tip was completely broken off. So, all right, let's move on. Oh, we wanted to break the handle, too, to see what's inside this handle. And let's see, you wanted me to use the vise. All right, because this and is... RHR wants to do a giveaway with the knife. <laughs> with this knife? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Why would anyone want this knife? All right, let's see. Where, where do you live, RHR? What do we want to break this thing with? You guys did say the bandsaw. Should we try the bandsaw on it just to see? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's try the bandsaw. An RHR is from Texas. Okay. Gotcha. in there pretty tight. All right, let's give it a go. There we go. Here, you better watch your head. I don't wanna... Okay. Let's 
see how that looks. Okay, yeah, look at this. That's actually, I'm glad you guys told me to bandsaw it, because that, to me, that's disgusting. Like, that is the garbage that's inside this knife. That's how much it's holding it. So, <laughs> it's a really good thing we didn't sell this thing. This is complete garbage. But, uh, yeah, let's put that away and uh, look at something else. Yeah, I was thinking we have a really good couple of uh, T10 tool steel knives that I think would be good to test on um, if we get to that point. All right, so let's see. I guess the only thing I like about that knife was the sheath. The sheath is actually pretty nice looking. Actually looks pretty solid. So put that away. And oh, this is kind of cool. So, all right. These are, this is that same throwing knife company. They sent me these guys too, which I thought looked pretty cool. Kind of interesting. It's that kind of ax style throwing knife. Um, the problem with these is like, how do you throw something like this? That'd be difficult. Um, I, don't, I honestly don't know. I mean, because I, I typically like to throw my knives kind of that yeah, way. How's, how's the weight on this one, asks White Tiger? <sighs> I'm going to guess that this thing weighs about, I mean, it's, it's balanced there, which isn't a very good balance point for if you're going to try to throw this thing. I'm going to guess this weighs around four ounces, three ounces, would you say? Maybe two ounces? I would say two, three, yeah. Okay, two so to three ounces. Like three ounces, maybe four. Yeah, gotcha. So, I mean, the weight isn't bad. I actually like that it's a little bit heavier for a throwing knife. Uh, I'm going to guess that this is a carbon steel based on uh, some of the, the look of this knife. Uh, but again, like the paint is just not, in my, in my opinion, the paint is just not good enough. Like it just feels like, it just looks like someone spray painted it or something. And that bothers me. Um, I mean, granted, it doesn't really matter for a throwing knife because the paint's going to get dinged up so quick anyway. But uh, would you guys want us to sell something like this? I mean, it's kind of cool, but I just, I don't, oh, look at this. Okay, so that, this, this actually answers my question right there. Look at that ring in the pommel. It's got a big chip in it. That's not okay. I can't sell that. That's, that's garbage. Um, and I guess if I, were to, if I were to get something like this, I would want there to be enough space there, enough uh, enough space in the ring of the pommel, and then enough space here to actually use it as an actual knife and not just a throwing knife. If I'm gonna have something kind of gimmicky like this as a throwing knife, I want it to be a legitimate knife as well. So this, this does not ring legitimate to me. Um, I could get a little bit of control with it, but the, my hand is way too scrunched in there. As far as throwing, I don't even know how I'd throw this thing. I guess just kind of like that. Yeah, it's, it's silly. This is kind of silly, honestly. I bet I could learn how to throw this if I spent some time doing it, but I, I don't see this as being a very legitimate weapon, honestly. Um, the case is kind of cool. The sheath is kind of cool. I like the leather sheath, but uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that's worth selling or not? Would anybody, would anyone want to buy these? <laughs> I'm leaning towards a big no, but... Yeah, I'm guessing that's a no, too. That's a big no. Okay, <laughs> nobody jumped in, so that's a big no. Okay, cool. Well, let's put that away. All right. Uh, James, what type of knife would you want to see? I've got... Actually, this one's kind of cool. Let's look at this guy. Let's check this guy out. Okay, so again... Oh, I, see, I, I, like, I like that the way that they make these blades... And this is like an enormously thick, this is one of the better ones we've seen yet. So this is an enormously thick piece of steel. Um, I'm going to guess again that that's a carbon steel, honestly, and not a stainless steel, which um, I would prefer on a knife to have a carbon steel instead of a stainless steel. But there are some benefits to stainless steel, like being corrosion resistant. I mean, that is kind of nice. Uh, but... The problem is, as we can see, by using a carbon steel on this, they've added this layer on here, 
and it's actually, you can see that it's actually rusting through, where if they had used a stainless steel or a tool steel or a manganese, as you suggested previously. Um, Green, Green Veggie Beast wants us to stress test that. Yeah, that's what we'll and White do. White Tiger says, that's Big Bertha. <laughs> this is Big Bertha. Um, how would you prefer me to stress test this? Because I already can tell I wouldn't sell something like this. I can tell because, um, I mean, I like that it's full tang. I think that's great. I like that it's carbon steel. Um, I don't like how it's rusting through already. That bothers me. Uh, and the blade, to me, like, if we look at this, I like to see a really nice, clean blade. And you can tell that they quickly sharpen that because the tip isn't, like, perfect on there. So I don't like that. Um, we can see where they put the handle around. RHRGB says to side load the blade. Side load the blade. What is it? Oh, okay, says gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> uh, flamethrower. <laughs> That's actually an awesome idea, flamethrower. Uh, I think we've done that before. As far as comfort goes, it's not bad. Yeah, Alex Seekins points out they rust like that because they come from overseas. They should coat them with oil. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Yeah, a lot of the factories that send me stuff are from overseas, and I'm pretty sure this one probably was as well. Flash Force says that looks like scale on it. Scale, okay, gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, uh, it does. It does look like scale. But yeah, we can see that the handle's kind of garbagey. Um, let's see how it holds up for I mean it feels pretty solid as far as that goes Sean, Sean Clifford wants us to stab it into a socket and twist that doesn't sound like a great idea Sean <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny though let's test it against the concrete I mean it that's that's one of the things I like about carbon steel is we could so easily clean that up if we wanted to so the blade, I mean, it, it took off the tip a little bit, but overall the blade held up. Um, it's not bad. I mean, I'm actually semi-impressed with this knife. I just don't like the look of it. I feel like it, it wasn't finished very properly. Yeah, so if we look at that. Yeah, so we can see there, it definitely dinged up that blade pretty badly. Um, and I don't like that. I don't like, uh, yeah, granted it is concrete. So you, you are going to get some dings in the blade, but there are metals that will hold an edge a lot better than that, even against something like this. So can, that's can, disappointing to me. Can, can we bend test this one? Yeah, we can, we can bend test it. Um, it's not going to snap as easily as the other one because this is more of a carbon steel, we can tell. But, uh, I mean, it might be worth it. I'd rather do something a little more creative with it, like... Can you guys think of anything really creative we could do to destroy this knife? Sound, I mean, it's, sound it's, off in the comments if you have an idea for how to destroy this one. <laughs> yeah, I can't really think of anything. White, good. White Tiger says polish and oil at it, it might be sal salvageable. Yeah, I could definitely salvage this, absolutely. I could salvage this knife for sure, but the problem is that I don't want to sell something to a customer that where they're going to have to salvage it or they're going to have to fix it. So it's White definitely... Tiger, White Tiger also suggests that we hit it with the Warhammer mace. <laughs> I don't want to destroy the Warhammer mace with it. <laughs> um, I would be R curious. RHI, RHR says to put in a vise and swing a katana at it. Yeah. And Flash Force says, go a, M, go a uh, M80. <laughs> you know what? They've got some really good idea in M80. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Knife against um, swords, another suggestion. All right. So I'm a little embarrassed for you guys to see this, but I'm going to bring you into my office. And I've got a lot of old swords that might be good to test on it. So, yeah, let's see what I have in there that would be interesting to do that with. RHR suggests a 50 cal for this one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> jeez. All right. Let's see. Okay. See, most of these are all the old weapons that I used in videos where we just can't sell them anymore. So. We, we also got so uh, Lawrence Obel suggested we use a baton to break it. A baton. An M80. <laughs> An M80. I got this guy we did in a video a few weeks ago. 
Oh, the zombie. Zombie axe. It's a possibility. Oh, this is a good example of one where I ordered it and I was extremely disappointed with it. So look at this. So I love these, uh, these Tai Chi swords, but this thing first off had just a dull blade. I didn't like that. And I don't like that wobble action. I'd actually be curious how this holds up against it. So why don't we try swinging this at it? I'll bring this back and then we'll grab a couple other things, see what else I have. We got a suggestion to do a DIY nunchuck. Do it yourself nunchuck? Yeah. I mean, I did, in the video three weeks ago, I did make this one. And, Fla so. and Flash Force suggests we uh, get some liquid nitrogen. Oh man, that would be so fun. <laughs> yeah, this thing, this thing actually turned out pretty good, the spiked nunchuck. So yeah, if you haven't seen that video, I did make this on video a few weeks ago. Uh, and then someone made this really cool thing. So, <laughs> an awesome creation. An right? awesome creation. And then I remember making this bow staff on video a while back. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? Could use a claw against it. So this claw would be interesting. Uh, could use a tactical nightstick. That could be kind of fun. Yeah, baton was suggested. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you guys were talking about an expandable baton or if you guys were talking about uh, like a tonfa style nightstick. This could be fun. Yeah, maybe try this. That would be good. See how that holds up. Um, let's see what else do we have. Got this sword here, which we used in a previous video. And that has a carbon steel blade, so that could be good. see I also have some canes stun guns um, oh what is this oh, I got this guy so white tiger wants to know while, uh, this guy's while cool. we're figuring this out uh, what martial arts do you study Kyle um, so I started off as a kid in Wisconsin there was only one school and um, it was called Fred Villari School of Self-Defense, and I don't even know if they're around anymore. I think, they're, I think they switched over to United Martial Arts, but that's the only school they had in my town in Wisconsin. Uh, so they taught a variety of like Taekwondo, Kung Fu, Kenpo. It was kind of their own little creation of stuff. Uh, I did that until I moved to Arizona, and then when I moved to Arizona, all of a sudden they had this huge variety of awesome martial arts to choose from. So I went into Judo right after that, and that, that was like a huge change for me, going into Judo, because all of a sudden it went from kicks and punches and all this acrobatic stuff into all of these throws and flips and grappling type stuff and I, I had so much fun with it but my instructor moved so then I joined into the MMA stuff got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai had a lot of fun with that through college because I was a I was a bouncer at a club so it was a lot of fun like practicing my MMA stuff during the day and then bouncing at night that was a lot of fun I got to actually test out a lot of stuff but uh, then after that, then I got back into the traditional martial arts, uh, more of the uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu, the Aikido jiu-jitsu, stuff like that. And that's kind of where I find myself now is more of the traditional styles. I like traditional. The MMA is great. Love MMA. If I'm ever, I, do, I don't get into fights anymore, but if I did, I would plan on using more of the MMA stuff. But the traditional is where my heart is. That's the stuff I love. I love traditional yeah. martial arts. Okay, let's, let's bring these guys back there um, and we'll just try a couple of these things. So I'll bring this, this, and we'll hit this blade. And then did I bring my, there's my glasses. Okay, so I'm gonna bring all this stuff in back and let's see if we can destroy this blade in back. Let me get my safety glasses ready right now. How many uh, viewers do we have right now? Uh, 32. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so this is our first live stream. We don't really know what we're doing yet. Um, but I was actually curious, like, so we've been doing different weapons in different videos. Are there any specific weapons you guys want to see more of that are more interesting to you? Because I know that today we did knives, because there's a lot of people that love knives. Um, 
but I know that there's also a lot of the audience that just gets bored when we show knives. Because, I don't know, it, I like to, when I do weapons, when I watch weapons videos, I like to see stuff that's unique. So I'm curious what you guys think. All right, so let's see. So we want to put this in this way then, I guess. First off, let's see if we can clean up that blade really quick. So we got a big ding in it. Let's see if we can put another big ding in it. Um, what, where's a good piece of metal I can hit? Oh, I got an idea. Let's see. Sure, here we go. Okay, so I've got this big piece of metal and this is solid steel here. So what I want to do is I want to put a big ding in that blade. Okay, perfect. All right, so look at that. That's what I wanted to do. So we look at that. Let's see if we can clean that up and actually make this a, yeah, see? So this is such cheap metal that that actually destroyed the blade in a really bad way. But let's see if we can clean that up really quick. So that's chewed up really badly. So it's kind of a debate as to whether I'd use a regular grinding wheel or whether I'd use a soft wheel on that. I think I'm gonna use a regular grinding wheel first just to chew away a little bit of metal on the whole thing. I'm gonna do that really quick. Yeah, that's a lot of metal to chew away. I'm actually gonna have to go at a, at, a, at a steeper angle to try to get more of that metal off so we can actually create a blade out of it. So I'm going to do this style of blade where it kind of goes in and then comes out. I think that'll be kind of cool. So I'm just going to clean that up just to make it quick. Now I'm going to use a soft wheel to actually clean it up, make an edge to it. That's pretty sweet. A little bit more. Okay, so White Tiger asks, I specialize with weapons in my martial arts, but I only practice yeah. Swords and staffs all he's using? Yeah, I would yeah, probably... Yeah, practice swords and staffs. Yeah, um, I would probably... I, I like the nunchucks a lot, but they're not like an overly effective weapon for like if you're actually going to use a weapon. I love the idea of staffs. I think staffs are awesome. Um, so I would, I would first start by learning... Just let me finish this real quick. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice. Okay, so as you can see, 
I ended up making it this type of blade just to do it quickly. If I was gonna do this like and actually take time with it, I would actually make this whole blade all the way around. But I just wanted to make this part sharpened. And we see a lot of blades like this too, but that's actually really sharp already. So that's pretty sweet. I mean, making it like that in like a quick period of time. So, um, but yeah, as far as weapons go, I think nunchucks are fun. I think they're a lot of fun. I don't think they're the most effective weapon in the world, but I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, I would personally try to study the weapons you would actually like need if you needed a uh, need a weapon like I'd learn knives I think knives are awesome swords are great. I think swords are great um, I uh, And then bow stabs bow stabs are awesome because you can grab a stick anywhere. So a screama too definitely great um, But as far as fun to play with I love butterfly knives. I love uh, I love nunchucks I think they're fun three sectional stabs are awesome, too But I don't know You got plenty of choices so, all right, let's bring this back now that we've cleaned up the blade. Oh, yeah, we were going to break it. That's right. All right, so let's try to break this thing. Okay, so how how did they want me to break this? Did they say anything? Yeah, how do we want to break this, uh, this knife here? And we got this guy. Should we, uh, well, I mean, we can see what it, what the Tonfa does against it. It all kind of towards here. You good? You got Should any glasses or anything? No. Yeah, maybe go to, ah, uh, no, you're good. Yeah, see, if we look, it's actually chipped off the wood there. Yeah. Giancarlo wants us to test the uh, sustainability of the, uh, of the samurai swords on the future video, too. Yeah, yeah. No, we did that on the uh, $20 versus $200 sword. I don't know if you remember that one. Um, but it depends. That, that completely depends on the sword blade. Like, we have 1095, we have spring steel, we have t tool steel, um, and then, of course, we have the... the lower end carbon steels, the 1060, 1045s. Uh, we don't really carry any stainless steel anymore. I think we might have a couple of wall hangers, but we really pretty much got rid of all the garbage swords. Uh, just because we just, oh, here we go, look at this. So that, that uh, handle just kind of came off. Anyway, let's just end that and let's go to uh, something else real quick. <laughs> Check out a folding knife because I know you guys want to see what a, what a, what you do with a folding knife to test that out. I think that's important. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's look at this guy. So the first couple things I look at when I look at a folding knife like this is first I like to check the spring assist. It's not bad, not bad. I actually really I like a really nice fast spring assist. This one's okay. I mean, it opens it without having to flick my wrist. That's really important because you'll see some really bad spring assists out there where you got actually got to go like that. So this one's not bad in that respect. Um, the second thing I like to test is I like to see how strong that, that lock is on there. So we actually test that out by kind of pulling on it, make sure we're kicking it sometimes. So let's actually test this out like this. So you gotta make sure if you do this kind of thing that you don't have your fingers in there because you can slice off your fingers pretty easy. But yeah, see that's not good. Did you guys see how easily that broke? So that, that's like the second test I like to do on a knife. And if it fails that test, then I don't want it. Because I don't want the idea of a blade actually cr crushing down on your finger. Granted, it has this part on there so it's not gonna cut your finger off. But how would you feel if you were out actually needing a knife and it broke and the lock, lock broke like that? I wouldn't like that. That would really bother me. You can always fix them. You can always bend it back, but why would we want to sell something that's going to break in the first place? Um, also, like if we look at this, we can tell that the casing is actually plastic. That's like, like I don't mind. There's some really good 
plastically nylon fiber materials that actually have fiberglass ingrained into the plastic and that's good. G10 is a good example of a polymer that actually holds up really nicely on a knife, on a knife handle. But this to me, I think that's just plastic. I have a feeling if we break this, that's actually just gonna be plastic on there. So- Do you think if you threw it at the asphalt, it would break? If we threw it at the asphalt? Yeah. <laughs> Where's my glasses? <laughs> <clears throat> I think this whole knife would break really easily. Um, I think this is a terrible idea. <laughs> this, could, this could bounce back and hit me. I, I'm not going to do that. It's, it's going to give kids bad ideas on video. So, Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, but, but let's, uh, let's actually, I wonder if I've got something here to hammer this. Oh, here we go. OK. I'm actually going to just use this knife that we already broke and break this handle. I'm going to grab this guy here. So I actually have this concrete here. Um, I started the combative YouTube channel, started recording for that just recently. Uh, we haven't released the first video yet. It's going to be called Into the Armory. And um, we're, we're, it's a little more serious than the Karate Mart YouTube channel. It's, uh, we're going to be testing things a lot further. Uh, so like what I did is I took brass knuckles and was testing them on the concrete to see how well they would hold up. Uh, so that's why I've got this concrete here. Let's see, see what this does. Should try the blade on this thing? It's actually holding up better than I thought, but you can see, you can see that the plastic is actually chipping away. And this isn't just a standard plastic. This, this looks like it's some sort of, oh no, that, that's just plastic garbage. Yeah, that's, that's kind of garbage. So, I mean, I like the fact that it's corrosion resistant, so that's definitely kind of nice for an outdoor knife, but again, I wouldn't want a knife like this. I think this is garbage, so um, yeah, we're definitely not going to be selling this, that's for sure. Okay, so put that down. What do we want to test next? Okay, this one's kind of cool. All right. All right. So look at that. we got a push dagger here. I love push daggers. They're actually one of my favorite knives. I think they're so fun. Yeah, that's actually pretty solid there. The tip's actually pretty sharp too. Um, man, I don't like how this manufacturer doesn't put the, the type of steel it is on the blade. That bothers me, that's a problem. Uh, but I'm gonna guess that this is a carbon steel might yes. be a stainless steel. Mr. Nancy, yes, we're all glad here that we're not testing out stun guns on each other today. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a future week. Okay, and then look at this. Look at how they notch this blade, too. That's just, can you see that on camera? Like how there's a notch in there? Like that's just shoddy workmanship to me. And then, yes, this is full tang. I like how it's full tang. I think that's good. And the handle actually feels pretty decent. But there's some really like shoddy pieces in here. Like, look how they they um, polished that up. It looks like they dug in accidentally with a grinder or something. And then we can tell that they pinned the blade in there properly. But just the way that it was like epoxied on there, like it was probably epoxied into the handle or something. You can kind of see like there's just like paint on the outer side. So this is like a good example of what could have been a really nice push dagger, but it was just done in such a fast, shoddy way that I would never want to sell something like this. So that's unfortunate too, because this actually could be a really good knife. I could actually see myself holding something like this, um, see how it does in the concrete. And it held, held up decent. The tip didn't, dip didn't get too bad. It actually looks pretty good. Um, one problem is I don't really like how this is curved like that. I mean, I like it kind of, but I'd rather it be maybe a different material or something, because you can see my, my hands are bleeding now from doing that. Um, so I don't like that. I just, I like a comfortable knife. I like a knife that fits in my hand properly. This one doesn't. Um, so again, sadly, not gonna be selling this one. And that's, that's the unfortunate thing, is when manufacturers send me stuff or factories send me stuff, it's like one out of every 20 items that I'll actually end up carrying, because I wanna carry good stuff. I don't want people buying stuff and then being like, oh, this is garbage. Yeah, Mr. Son, uh, Mr. Anansi weighs in, clipped point push daggers are more for looks than for functionality. Interesting. A standard symmetrical blade is your best bet. 
Okay, would, you, would he say a drop point or a spear point, or what would he suggest as far as a push dagger? Because I, I agree, I agree with what he said. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. Was he able to hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I just okay, cool. Know. Yeah, I'm actually curious about what he says yeah, on that. Green, green veggie beast says spear point. Spear point, yeah, okay. Yeah, green veggie beast says that, yeah. On a push dagger? That makes sense, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, Mr. Zanzi also way back in. Spear point is best. So, yeah, that's two votes for the spear point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Gotcha. What about on a standard fixed blade knife? What, what is their favorite? See, I love, I love how knowledgeable these people are. They, <laughs> they, it's so helpful to me, like, hearing about what you guys are into. Green Veggie Beast says Tonto. Yeah, so that, that's actually my favorite as far as just a standard fixed blade. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so on to this guy. I just opened this one up here. We got another folding knife. And I like the look of this because to me, this looks like a K-bar or something. Looks like a K-bar um, marine knife. Uh, but I can tell immediately upon opening this that that is, I was expecting this to be a wooden handle. That is not. Um, I don't believe that that's plastic. That feels like it's some sort of resin or something, uh, which is okay depending on the price of this knife. If this thing is over $13, I would not want to, you know, buy this. This is I do like the Tonto point on there. I do like that. And then I also like the serration down here, but that's that's if I'm going to have serration on a knife, I want to I want it to be a really good serration and this is not that's, that's just not sharpened very properly. Um, and then the plain edge is also pretty darn dull. I don't like how, oh, it's, it's actually sharp up here. It's sharp on the tip and it's sharp on this part. But the plain edge definitely could have been sharper and better here. But the serration is actually the most disappointing part. I don't, I don't like how the serration is. That so, bothers me. So we have a question from Deranged Lunatic, AKA DL. What kind of self-defense would you recommend for somebody who's older and disabled? Oh man, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so someone mentioned Krav Maga earlier. I really, I think Krav Maga for people who haven't trained before, um, I think Krav Maga is one of their best bets because it's, it's an, an Israeli martial art and it goes um, directly into what would actually work if you were actually attacked. So you're not gonna learn a lot of the um, stuff that you might learn in a Japanese martial art, like a jiu-jitsu or something where um, you can take someone down and hold them down, where Krav Maga is more about actually protecting yourself and staying alive in a fight. So I would actually think Krav Maga would be your best bet on that. But there's a lot of Kempo techniques that are incredible. There, in, in every martial art, you're gonna find techniques that are valuable. And that's why I never say take a specific martial art, always learn from different people. And also the thing that's so important to remember is that it doesn't always depend on the martial arts so much. It depends on the, the instructor. The instructor is just as important, if not more important, than the martial art. Because I've been to schools where, you know, the martial art wasn't something that I typically would recommend to people, but the instructor was just so darn good that he was able to give valuable techniques that would work for anyone. So, I mean, instructor, I would actually, I always suggest to people, visit at least three or four schools and then just find one that fits right for you. Ask them about the things that you're actually interested in. If you're a disabled person, talk to them about what you would do in a situation and hopefully the instructor can help you out with that. If not, try a different school because there's gonna be someone out there that can help you with that. So. And Brian Callio weighed in with sword canes. I know sword canes are also very popular and mm -hmm. as well as just walking canes that are more designed for self-defense as well. Yes, yes, yeah. that's a very good point. The problem with sword canes is there's a lot of laws around them as far as, you know, laws always pertain to what can be sold there, what can be owned, and what can be carried. And there's a lot of places where, you know, if you try to carry one, you can get in big trouble with them. So sword canes is one of those things I don't really overly recommend for people. I, I honestly, I love canes themselves, just standard canes. If you can learn how to use a standard cane, I mean, you're set because they're not going to be illegal. I, I can't think of anywhere where a, a cane is illegal. But just try to find one. Like there's a video I did, I think like a year ago, where we had... A, a standard cane that had like a beak on it and the beak actually is great for digging in to things it's great for capturing um, so I think that just find a really good cane I think is a good idea 
Okay, so we were looking at this K-bar style, which could be really cool if this was actually wood, but this is kind of a plasticky material, which bothers me. So again, if this thing was like 13 bucks, I could definitely see it being a good knife. Maybe, maybe 14, 15 on this guy. Um, I, I do like how it's got the glass breaker on the end, uh, so you could do your hammer strikes with it, uh, or you could actually break glass if you ever needed to. So for a vehicle like knife, I could see that being important. Um, uh, James Harrington says he has the exact same knife. You have this one, James, or do you have a better version that's an actual K-Bar? Because this, <laughs> this one is something a manufacturer just sent to me, and it's kind of cheap. It doesn't feel very good quality, but we're going to test it out, so we'll see if it actually is decent. So the one that you have, is an actual K-Bar style, like wood, or is it plasticky? Yeah, oh, okay, well, that's, that's kind of nice. The spring assist is actually pretty good on this. I like that. Um, but the things we need to test on it is we need to check out the lock blade. We need to make sure that the lock blade is actually secure. That's uh, probably my most important thing I like to do. Thanks for joining us today, White Tiger. Oh, you heading out, White? All right, have a good one. All right, so let's test this. Green Veggie Beast wants to know how the lock is on that one. Yeah, that's what I want to care about, too. So, yeah, we can see that the blade... It's pretty darn sharp. That's why I love Tonto's, though. Tonto's just sticks so nicely. Uh, so I like that about it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I want to test more than anything. I, it, I feel like when I look at that lock, it doesn't feel very secure. It feels a little bit weak to me. Uh, but granted, it's it's very difficult to find a, a good lock on the, the really super cheap knives like this. But uh, let's test yeah. this out. And Flash Force wants to know if that's a real glass ba breaker with a carbide BV. <laughs> that's uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Um, that's a that's a great question though. Okay, so all right, let's uh, let's test this thing. See how how strong it is. Yeah, look at that. That's garbage. That just broke so easily. Yeah, so, so that's one of the first things we do whenever we get a folding knife is we test that lock. And um, that's, yeah, it's already broken. And the problem with this is that it broke so easily that the whole casing of the knife actually broke off. You can see there. So again, this would not be something we'd want to carry, which is unfortunate too, because it's kind of a cool looking knife. It's just usually when I see these plastic cases, that, that bothers me. That's like usually a big red flag for me that that wouldn't be a knife we'd want to carry. Um, so, yeah, let's put this piece of garbage away and look at something else. Um, all right, what else do we have here? We've got this guy. Okay, so here's another one of those. Um, you know, the, this one almost looks like that manganese steel, but based on how we saw the rusting in that previous knife, I can tell that this is a carbon steel. And, um, but it is a really thick piece of carbon steel. So I, I like that. I like how it's full tang in the handle. Um, we've, we've got, uh, I don't like that. I don't like how we see discoloration on that. that. That's like, I mean, I know that's not a big deal to people. Like I'm, I'm obsessive compulsive though. I'm a little bit uh, OCD. And uh, so if I saw something like that and I had spent you know, money on a knife, that would kind of bother me a little bit. I'd actually, I'd probably stain that myself just to make it look right. But as I said, any knife that I, any weapon that I buy, I almost always modify it to fit me correctly. Uh, this thing, another thing I don't like about it is there's no jimping on top. I like jimping. I like some thumb grooves up here just for a little bit of added control. I mean, I could definitely get control with this knife. It actually, the handle's fairly comfortable. So, I mean, I could definitely get some control with this knife, but there's just little things about it that just make me think that it was quickly made and cheap, and I don't like that. Because um, usually if something's quickly made and cheap like that, then it's not forged properly, and then you have a problem with the metal. So I don't like that either. Um, but, uh, I mean, there are some things I do like about this knife. I actually think this would hold up pretty nicely. Yeah, I mean, it actually is a pretty decent knife, honestly. It's just probably not something I would want to carry. Yeah, and then also we can see again, it's that material you were talking about, Troy, but because it was put on a carbon steel and probably shipped from overseas, you can already see some rusting in there. And I don't like that. I definitely don't like that, so that bothers me. But really, this is probably the best knife we've looked at so far, honestly, out of these samples that I got. 
Um, but again, I'm not going to carry this, unfortunately. It's just not good enough. So I do like the leather sheath, though. I do like that this manufacturer tends to, tends to like leather sheaths, so I do like that. Um, all right, so let's look at, I uh, got some more, oh, this Oh, this is a good one. Okay, this, these are going to be garbage. I can just tell already. So I like looking at garbage knives. It's just kind of fun to me. After years and years and years of looking at weapons, it's fun to see the garbage ones too. So yeah, look at these. You guys, you guys are going to immediately, just upon one look, are going to say that these are garbage. So yeah, look at that. Okay, so the reason it's so obvious for me is just look at that. I mean, I, I would be willing to guarantee that if we break these things apart, they're just going to have a sliver of the knife that goes in about that far. And that is, I, I mean, it, they made it look like bone, that's for sure, but I do not believe that that's bone. Yeah, Brian Kelly calls it a showpiece. Yeah, a show. More, more for display than anything, right? <laughs> I wouldn't even want to show these things. <laughs> like, I would, be, I would be embarrassed to have these on my wall, to be completely honest. You know what these look like to me? Um, and uh, they look like something if you went to, um, what are those, a head shop. If you went to a head shop and saw a whole bunch of their knives, that would be what these would be, like cheap, just garbage knives. So when manufacturers send me stuff like this, I'm just like, no, nah, this is not, this is not something I'd want to sell. I, I bet this knife will actually bend just stabbing it, honestly. And I do not get a good enough grip on this that I even really feel comfortable stabbing with it. This one's a, a really thick piece of metal, so this one I think will actually hold up to some stabbing, but. I would be willing to bet that if we stab this into something and then tried hitting it from the side, because of the tang of this blade, you can see it. If you, you can see if you get a really tight angle in there, you can tell that the tang of that blade is only going through about that far, and it's just a little rat tail in there. I guarantee it. So that's, that's going to be garbage. In fact, I bet if I twisted this end, it, there's even a chance that if I twisted that end, it's hooked into there with a little bit of a nut and bolt. And that, that might be what's holding the blade in, because I'm not seeing any pins in here anywhere. Um, I'm actually curious about that. Should we try twisting the end? Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Let's take these back, stick it in the vise, and take a pliers to it and just see if we can get this thing apart just to see what's inside. I think that would be interesting. See if it holds up first. Actually held up pretty nicely there. So, I mean, the steel's not even that bad. That, my guess is this is another carbon steel. The steel is actually not that bad. If it hit concrete and still was able to keep the tip, that's not that bad. Try it again. And I'm, I'm not hitting it lightly. Like that's actually, I'm hitting that hard. That's actually sticking into the concrete and holding a tip. So even though that's cheaper steel, that's still holding up pretty nicely. And if it did get dinged up, that is actually such a small amount of denting that you could actually use just a standard knife sharpener or whetstone to fix that. James Harrington is saying that the handle looks too bulky for his taste. What do you think of the handle? <laughs> the handle's garbage. I completely <laughs> agree, James. We got we to gotta take this thing apart because I want to see what's inside it. So let's actually take this back and take it apart real quick. I wish I had a, yeah, I should just bring up pliers with me. That'd be a little bit easier than trying to go back in the shop all the time. So the nice thing is it's still in the morning, so the employees aren't really here yet, so we have a lot of space to work with, which is good. All right, so. Okay, so we'll just throw that in here. Okay. Just see. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. I was exactly right. Yep, look at that. Yeah, so this, if you, um, we don't sell them. We stopped selling them years ago. But um, if you go to the mall and um, you see swords hanging on the wall that are like pretty cheap, this is how they connect the blade into the handle. It's actually a blade with this long rat tail thing. And we're going to see in a second. Yeah, so it's basically just a nut and bolt that's holding that onto the knife blade. So that is what we've got inside. That is why you don't want a cheap knife. 
That thing's just gonna break on you so easily. Look at that garbage. So when you watch, um, you know, late at night, you'll see those shows on TV where they're selling like 100 knives for 50 bucks or whatever. This is what you're gonna get, this kind of thing. So do you really wanna defend yourself with this? Is this what you wanna use if you actually got into a confrontation? No, <laughs> definitely not. So granted, we're not gonna be selling this, that's for sure. All right, let's see what else we have. You know, I, I did get a bunch of samples of stun guns and things in too, but uh, this isn't gonna be a stun gun video, so. But sadly, that means I've gotta test them out, so. All right, the employees are just starting to get in, so I gotta hurry this up a little bit. But uh, let's see, is there anything else I really wanna look at? We've got, oh, I would like to find a good quality, um, oh, yeah. No, this is, this is like that other one. This is that same garbage where that's gonna break really easily. So definitely not gonna get that. Yeah, flash, flash force called it a gas station knife. Yes, yeah, yeah think, that's the and, best way to and describe someone, it. Someone called it a convenience store knife. Yes, earlier, yes, so. a head shop knife or yeah. a gas station knife. That's exactly the way to describe it. Okay, so this one is a little bit. Oh, see, I didn't like that spring assist. That's slow. Do you see? Do you see how slow that was? That means that the spring assist isn't very good. I mean, it's decent. It's better than a lot AC, but at least we don't have to flick our wrist to do it. Um, the handle's kind of cool on this guy. It's actually like a, uh, I'm gonna guess that this is a steel handle, possibly stainless steel, probably more of an aluminum, but if it is, it's a really thick aluminum. So I'd have to, I'd actually have to run some tests on it to see what that handle's actually made of. Um, but it is like a thick metal, that's not plastic or anything. The blade on this guy is definitely a stainless steel. I'm gonna guess a 440. I'm not sure 100%, but based on the look of it, I'm gonna guess a 440. Um, I actually like that point on there. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's kind of like a, what, what would you guys call that point? A spear point? Possibly. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a drop point tanto or something, but that's closer to like a spear point. Kind of nice. Um, a blade like that, I usually like to see a false edge on this side just to make it look nice or at least some sort of, um, some sort of uh, like grading on there. I would personally, if I were to buy this knife, I'd probably take a belt sander to this side of it and just sharpen that up too. But you really, if you ever do that, if you ever decide to do that, definitely check the legalities in your state because there's certain states where if you sharpen both sides, it can be illegal. So Hollywood Tacticoon called it a clip point tanto. Clip point tanto, that's exactly what it's called, yes, yes. See, I love, I love knife people. I love people who know all this <laughs> stuff, it's so awesome. Um, and the thing is, there's so many different types of points out there. But uh, okay, so we gotta test this thing out, see what, what's good about it. I do like that it's got a bottle opener and it's got that blade in there so we can cut through things. So that's got that utility purpose to it. Um, the glass breaker is decent on this guy, a little bit nicer than the last one. I mean, this one's getting to be a little bit better knife than the previous ones we looked at. So are we, are we like gonna that. do the lock test on this yeah, one? Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do the lock test. Um, the lock, again, I don't think it's gonna hold up. Uh, I mean, it, it's set up correctly, but the problem is the metal's not right in there. It's, it's not, I don't think it's gonna hold up, but I think it's worth the test for sure. So let's just see. Actually, this one's holding up pretty nicely. Okay, well, that's definitely better than the other ones for sure. Yeah, it's, they used a really thick steel in there, so that's actually holding up pretty well. I'm gonna try to break it just because I wanna, I wanna see how strong it actually is. But the, the, what, the, one of the reasons I can tell that that one's actually made a little bit better is even after putting that much strain on it, there's still no give in the blade at all. It's actually holding up pretty nicely. So this one's definitely a step up from those other knives we were looking at. Um, and the blade's actually super sharp too. I mean, really sharp. Yeah, the other week I did a video where I showed off those machetes and I mentioned in my video how I, how I cut off the tip of my pinky. But yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So I, I definitely have to be more careful with that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, let's test this a little bit. So that's, I love this clip point. I think that's awesome. That's actually really good, solid blade. Let's see how it does with the, with the concrete. So that's pretty nice. And let's see how that held up. 
I mean, so yeah, we can tell that it actually doled up that blade just a little bit. Again, that would be another reason I'd like to belt sand this side of it. I think that would be good. But as I said, I'm kind of crazy that way. Like any weapon I buy, I'm gonna modify it to fit what I like with a weapon. So I would belt sand that side just to make it just perfect for me. Um, so overall, the things I don't like about it, I don't like how, how the uh, spring assist is. I feel like the spring assist is too weak. Um, it's holding up pretty nicely though. So for like, I don't know how expensive this knife is. I honestly have no idea. Um, so I would say for a knife that's under $20, this is probably decent. If it's over $20, then it's definitely not something we'd want to carry. Brian but, Calio uh, says that he wants that knife. Yeah, see, it's actually, it's cutting through the wood before it's breaking the lock. So that's a pretty good sign that it's decent. So I, actually, I'm not, I'm not against this knife. This is, you, a, this is the first knife I'm not against. Do you know what type of steel blade it is? Yeah, uh, I'm, it doesn't say, but I'm going to guess based on what it looks like. I'm going to guess that this is a 440 stainless. That would yeah. be my guess. So it again, because of being a 440 stainless, I wouldn't want this knife to be over $20. Um, but for, for a knife under 20, if, if it, I don't know how expensive it is. If it's under 20, then it's worth it. But just, I mean, just for the handle itself, because it is actually a good solid, solid handle. I think that thing would actually hold up for you pretty nicely. Uh, some of the things I don't like about having a metal handle like that without any sort of G10 material over it or anything is you ha you can't have it as more of an outdoor knife. So that kind of bothers me. But but overall, this is a decent knife. I actually think this is probably the first one I've seen today that's actually decent. So not bad. All right, let's see what else do we have. Got so many. And it, I, I have so many more, like so many more things I've got to look at and just go through. Uh, but I just grabbed the knives in general for this one um, yeah I, okay I got these guys here let's look at these okay so these are pink throwing knives which is kind of cutesy <laughs> a little bit um, fairly sharp I don't like I first off I don't like throwing knives this small I think that they are actually more dangerous than they are helpful because a knife like this if you do stick it wrong which Throwing knives are not exactly easy to throw. You know, a lot of practice, you can get pretty good with them, but these little guys, if they strike wrong, if they hit the wall, they're gonna bounce back and they bounce back far. Like these can actually bounce back and hit you. So I don't really like throwing knives this small. They are more concealable, but too small. The paint, if it was, if this was good quality paint, I would like it, but you can just tell, look, look at how in the holes, you can just see that that was just like thrown in there. Those are probably dremeled very, very quickly, or maybe just drilled super fast. But that's not like the kind of quality workmanship we like to see on things that we sell. So sadly, again, I probably wouldn't sell these even though they are like kind of cute pink knives. I think that's kind of cool, but. James Harrington's t taking off for now. So. All right, James, hey, so nice to see you, buddy. <laughs> You take care. That's the last one anyway. I think that's everything we're going to show off today. Um, do you guys have any questions for me on any of these knives or anything? And then if I do a live feed again, what would you like to see me do different? Nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting for the chats to come in. All right. Well, my plan is I... What, I'm going to probably do one of these every once in a while, maybe once a month or something. I might do them after Weapons Wednesday videos release, just because then I've got kind of my audience in there in the morning. But I've also been considering doing this on like a Saturday or something so that more people can join. Um, so um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, um, if you have any comments or anything, definitely leave them so I know what you guys are interested in. That would be good. Yeah, sound off in the comments on what you want to see, guys. Yeah, that would definitely be good. Uh, but I'll leave you for now, so uh, we'll see you next Wednesday for Weapons Wednesday. All right, guys? Have a great week.